Well, when they knocked down my door, they found 10 pounds of weed that was through the mail that they bust me with, and then um, found an AR-15 and a 40 Smith & Weston, and I think like twelve five to $13,000 in cash. Well, then I end up, we ride uh, dirt bikes one day or whatever, wrecked it. Long story short, started popping the, you know, perk tents. Messed me up. I was like, man, no wonder y'all like these things. Right. I'm all high as gas. So what are you, eating eating Roxy, shooting Roxy, no, snorting? I was, I was snorting them the first time, and then uh, my homeboy was like, man, smoke it one time, smoke them. But then I tried it and then fell in love with smoking them. Me and my son's mother had a talk, and she was like, imagine your kid going to your grave crying. And I, you know, I thought about it for a second. I'm like, man, imagine that the kid crying. Dad, I want you here, but you can't because you want to fucking get high. Mr. Carroll, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you making time. Yeah, no problem. As soon as we get this done, we'll go in here and finish that sleeve up. Yes, sir. Yes, that's sir. What's up? Hell yeah. So uh, I know we was locked up together. Yeah. And when we was locked up together, you was in for distribution of pot, right? Yep. And what, yep. they caught you through the mail? Yeah, busted me th right through the mail, yep. So uh, I got uh, 15 pounds sent through the, well, actually, sorry, 10 pounds sent through the mail and uh, got set up that way and uh, knocked down my door. And then, hold on, I got to restart. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start right at the beginning. So when you, where were you getting things from? Like you started just dealing a little bit of weed from around here. Or did you instantly start calling someone online? So when I was 15, I started uh, uh, selling pot, whatever, getting a little quarter pound of some mid-grade, whatever. And then um, uh, blew up from there. And then um, one of my homeboys uh, knew a guy from California. That was the best thing happened to me a lot cheaper too yeah a lot cheaper way so cheaper. when you were getting it around here for a quarter pound what were you paying for a quarter pound right here around here for chronic i think it was like 1200 okay so, god damn then, for a qp yeah That's dude expensive. it was expensive but i was still making money because right. i didn't smoke didn't what, drink didn't do anything what year was this 2000 i'm gonna say 2012 okay something around there maybe 2011 right, 2010. so you're talking 10 years ago prices were a lot different yeah way as far different. as people having weed everywhere like they do now it wasn't quite like that yep yep so okay. then uh met him got up with him and then he was like hey man send me five thousand through accounts so we started doing it that way i took the chance on it thought you know if he flakes it's all right because i got plenty of money i ain't worried about okay, it. okay okay so then uh Everything worked out, and then started selling big weed, started sending so 20, 30. So you're sending him money through accounts or whatever so that he can get his money, and then he's mailing it right to your address? Yep, mailing it right. Well, not to exactly my address. Okay, to, so you gave him a fake address. Yeah, I gave fake addresses, like either people that want to make money. So what I would do was sell, well, they would sell me their address. So i will be like, look, I'll give you $1,000. Let me, I'm me send 15 or 20 pounds to your crib right and then that's what they'll do next we know get 15 to 30 and then start selling and, and if, that you, way. if you trusted them that way like all they're doing is going out and saying yo the package is here like come get your package and bring yep. me my grand right yeah so i wouldn't even i was too scared to be near because you know getting caught up and stuff so i would have another guy go pick it up for me pay him a couple hundred bucks they bring it to the crib, make sure everything's good, no trackers in it, because I heard you can have trackers and stuff uh -huh. in it. So then uh, they bring it to the crib and bust it all down and have it ready. Right, you sell ounces, quarters, whatever. Ounces, quarters, pounds, whatever you want. Whatever they want, it didn't yeah, matter. didn't matter. Usually I give you a way better price on pounds, because I like to make, I don't know how to explain it like this, but like to say less money but i would sell more quantity right. to get more because that's what my homeboy likes so i go out there sell say 15 in a week then um get another 15 within another week you know what i mean keep hurry up and selling it really yeah, fast. yeah as fast so, as you can flip yeah. them i know like a lot of people like the gram out their ounces or gram out their quarter pounds right. but you're sitting on it too long yeah. you know what i mean so i didn't i didn't like that I and by the time you get to the end of all that, it's drying up. And yeah, exactly. It's not near as good as it is when yeah. you first get it. 
Yeah. So that changes it up too. And I always had different qualities of tree anyway. Like I would have some stuff. I call it a get rich weed. It was good enough to sell, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really good like getting you high wise, but it looked really good. So I'd get it for like 500 a pound and then sell to these guys for, I'd sell 500 a quarter pound or whatever it was and make, you know, right. still you're, got almost a little close under 300%, a pound. That's 300%, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're so, spending five and making 2K. Yep. Making plenty. On every one of them. Yes, sir. How long did you do that? How long did you making? So I met him in, I'm going to say, I was with Leah then. I'm going to say 2013, I think it was when I met him. So it went all the way on for, well, till 2016 when I got busted. So end of 2016. So three good years you're doing that. Three good what years. What are you doing with the money? Stacking up, buying toys. Right, just buying trucks and cars. Yeah, buying and... trucks, jet skis. Uh, had a little business going too. Had uh, started my dad's business back up. We were doing that. And then see what else I did. Went on vacation a couple times, but really just. Easy come, easy go. Yeah. Just stacking up money. That's really. how money like that is too. When it's easy come, it's, yeah, it's you easy can get to rid spend of it real quick. Yep. When you work your ass off for it, it's a little bit harder for you to spend it so fast on a bunch of shit, isn't it? Yeah, it is, man. But it's a, it was a good little. So you started trip. this at what age? So how old were you then? So let's see. I was in ninth grade when I was like selling like little. And then, quarters and stuff like that to make me free smoke because I was smoking then. And then I got panic attacks off of it. Couldn't smoke it no more, but a lot of people were hitting me up. So I was like, screw it. So this is what mid grade around, you know what right. I mean? Not no chronic or anything like that. So then I started selling mid grade and I was paying five twenty five a quarter pound for mid grade. Was selling that, but was still making money. Was, on it. Yeah, especially when you wasn't smoking. Yeah, so I wasn't really doing anything. I was a homebody. I didn't go out, so I just kept stacking my money up. Mid grade disappeared. Then the chronic came around. I think I was paying through the dude in California. No, no, no. This is another okay. guy. It's before I okay, met him. This so is we, before California. Yeah. Still in school. Yes, yeah, still in school. Okay, but I was getting homeschooled at the time, so really kind of still in school, not really in school, but uh, under eighteen. Yeah, I was still way under eighteen at the time. I think I was. Say fifteen, maybe, maybe not even. So then, uh, get the quarter pound, whatever, and start stacking money up. Mid grade disappears, and then uh, chronic comes around. I was paying like five thousand for quarter or, or pound of uh, okay. chronic. Then started selling that, and then that dude got locked up. And then by that time, my California dude comes around, and then that's when all that took off. Huh. And you're getting it mailed to you. So eventually they catch up with you too, right? Yeah. So also when I got charged with uh, distribution of weed, I got distribution of Oxycontin because I found a good plug for an Oxy distributor. And I was getting okay, like- Okay, so you start using- you start, No, I didn't, need, I didn't even just use- selling I was Oxys. Just, just selling them. I okay. didn't touch anything. Didn't drink, didn't smoke anything at this time. I was still, I think I was 15, 16. Maybe 17, I can't really So you remember. just thought you was a little gangster. You just just selling, making money. Making money, yep. Like he was said, that guy, money. everybody calling you for their shit. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So then uh, I get linked up with this Oxy dealer, getting two, 300 of them at a time. It was all prescribed to them. There weren't no fentanyl at the Ooh, time or right. heroin or anything like that. They were all legit. And then uh, that's what really got me on the radar. So uh, basically, long story short, my homeboy knew a chick that worked at a gas station. We go meet up with her. Everything's good for, like we did this a hundred times. Well, then she ended up wearing a camera and a wire on us one day. So the DEA was sitting at another parking lot taking pictures of my black truck. Well, then after all that happens, that's when it got on the radar. And then they figure out where I lived. After they figure out where I lived, then they knock down my door. They get off. Hmm. And when and when charged you for the CI purchases. Like yep. how many charges did so she they have? So she only you? got me on one. So okay, that was so a good even though thing. the other ones was like 
bought and just used but yeah. then when she got caught with something she decided to turn on you yeah so i think what happened with her my homeboy told me was that uh she got into a car accident they found heroin on her mm. and then just a little petty charge you know at that time you get first offenders whatever i guess they scared her and then end up wearing a wire on my homeboy and then bam she gets us hit yeah that's what they do yeah so when they beat in what are they charged with what do they find well, when they knocked down my door, they found 10 pounds of weed that was through the mail that they bust me with, and then um, found an AR-15 and a 40 Smith & Weston, and I think like twelve five to $13,000 in cash. So they got and they took all that. They seized my black truck because my black truck was involved in that drug deal. Okay. So they ended up seizing that. And charging and locks you up to get bond? Yeah. So after he took me to jail and all that, after two weeks, I uh, hired a lawyer, David Downs. Call him if you ever get in trouble with any weed or anything. But uh, got called with him. He got me out of jail. And then I think it was like a year or two. Then yeah, I just went to jail. Yeah, to go to court. Waiting yeah, to go, go to, court. to court. Waiting to go to court. Yeah. Spending money on a lawyer going to court. Yeah. What's that like? That's the sleepless nights. Man, I have you ever, yeah. been to, you ever been to jail before that? No, well, so I did uh, four days on a speeding ticket. I got caught going 130 mile an hour in my Subaru. Did four days, scared to death. I right. mean, fucking shaking like this, you know, scared to death. Then never been there. But only there are people like, oh, you only doing four days? Like, yeah, I know. It's but it's my first time. You know, uh -huh. I'm scared to death. Right. Well, then got out and did that. But when I went to jail the second time for waiting on my bond, then. It wasn't too bad, you know what I mean? I already had a had little under, gist of it. You had an understanding of what it was going to be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, when they pull you in the back, strip you down. Yeah, pull your you, fucking nutsack yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, strip know? it up, bend over, get in that cold-ass shower right there. <laughs> spray you with that, uh, what's that shit they De spray you with? Dilouser, man. Yeah, get yeah, the get fleas lights, or some shit off. Lice and fleas, any of that kind of nasty shit off of yep, you. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, I think I've only had that done to me one time. All the times I've been in, I don't think they ever. I think it was every time I went in there. It's like been in there five times. So yeah, every time. And I've then been they, there. they they spray your hair and they spray your nuts. Nuts and all, yeah. Don't they? They spray yeah. everywhere where they. Yeah. Yeah. Anything got hair on your armpits and all. Ah, oh, yeah, terrible, man, it's man. a horrible, horrible. Then like, I get in that cold ass shower and you're fucking freezing, trying to get that shit out of your hair. Right, it's and terrible. you know, uh, I think you don't really realize the first time that if you just push that button a few times, it'll get hot. Yeah, it will. But yeah. you're just like you're so new to it down there, and they don't tell you nothing. nothing. So you just push that button. You're like, oh my god, yeah. and you're naked <laughs> as fuck in this freezing yep. cold place. So all you want to do is get dressed. Yeah, and their towels are what like this, dude. Right, right. Now they done sprayed everything on you with this shit, and you had no choice yep. but to get under the water. Yeah, that's yeah, it's right. definitely a horrible, horrible situation. Yeah. Then you get your, uh, did they give you skivvies or what kind of? Yeah, they gave you skivvies. I don't wear them. So I'm they had going... them unisex motherfucking yeah, mesh things. Yeah, dude, them things are terrible. Yeah, they're the worst. So I didn't even wear them underneath the jumpsuit. So back know. in the day, they used to give us boxers. Like I guess guys would order boxers mm -hmm. and then leave their box. Bro, they give you a forty-five size waist boxers. Oh with, my god! So you can't even wear them. stains all in them and stuff. Bro, it was bad. <laughs> Yeah, the shit's it was bad. It was some, some different match socks. Some of them would be a, a size six, and then the other ones would be a, a size twelve. Jesus, dude. Yeah, it was bad. I wish they would have gave us boxers in there. You know what I mean? That would have been nice. I mean, something. Them match things don't cut it. No, bro. they don't. And they ride up your ass. Right, and, shit. and if not, then your jump's just going right up against yeah. somebody else's jumpsuit. Yeah. Oh God, I know it's disgusting. Ugh. Yeah, it is not. A, it's not a fun way to live. No, it ain't. Then you can't wait until you order commissary so you can get your. You know, your sweats real and your shit. boxers and real yeah, shit. So, you so can you're feel like, excited the yeah. day it comes. Like, yes, I'm wearing fucking boxers. Yeah. So be comfortable while I'm laying in this shit And even up. then, that's 150 bucks, ain't it? Yeah. I mean, your first is, commissary dude. order, if you don't have $150, you ain't yeah, got shit. Yeah, you're screwed. You got to order deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush. And shit costs 10 times as much as what it does on the street. Yeah. Everything's 10 times as much. Yeah. Every, yep, everything. What's even some soups. What about them little pencils? What, do, what kind of pencils they give you to write with? I think it's like the ones like that, ain't it? Little baby ones, little baby <laughs> little, dicks. Little golf pencils. Like yeah, you, little like golf you pencils. Get when you go to, like, and they're like a dollar fifty. Right. And they only last like, you know, four, you know, whatever you write four or five times, they're done. And you got to beg them every time. Time to, to get a pencil. To get a pencil or yeah. to get it sharpened. Can you sharpen this pencil for me? <laughs> no yeah. fun. That shit is no fun, man. 
I hated it. And then what, what about the spork? You got to eat with a spork or a spoon? They gave it. Well, see, they took the plastic uh, spoons and forks out. Now, I can't remember what they uh, gave us for when dinner come. I think they stopped doing all that in there because they kept making shanks with them, even with the plastic spoons now so that the they big, come with the trays. They that don't was, give them that to was you the no big more. orange ones. Yeah, they that don't give them no more. Little hard. Yeah. You could buy them on commissary. Yeah, you have to buy them from somebody that's. It's been passed down. Right. You know what it's I mean? grandfathered you can buy, in. Yeah. So yeah. you can keep it like that. But sometimes the and CEOs are And now they just send them real thin little cheap plastic spoons with every tray. See, don't I don't even think they give them anymore. Right, but what are they eating with? I, I can't remember. I, I remember I was in there in, in 2022, and you know what? They might, I think they did give us spoons back in 2022. They did. But you had, what you have to do was, is give them back to the CEO and have to throw them in the trash. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't, you know. And then what, see, that doesn't make much sense. Like, what are you doing to eat soups at nighttime if you can't have a spoon? Yeah, exactly. I don't see, and that's what didn't make no sense with me. But we, you know, people who Yeah, you're going you know to make I mean? something work. Yeah, you're going to make something to. work no matter what. Yeah, but a lot of CEOs will make you throw your spoons away and all. And I guess it's because, I guess they're making shanks out of them. I don't yeah. know why it's the fucking county jail. You know yeah, what I mean? Bro. It's. I not mean, crazy around here. I know there's other places. Just to have that little sharp thing with them made people feel safe. I knew a dude who used to grow his fingernails out like a chick. And they were sharp, like gouge your eyes out. Really? Yeah. So you can... He would sharpen them down with like, yeah. Fucking so you can get like ready a shake chick. the body. Yeah, so you can scratch your eyes out. <laughs> you start fighting, you just scratch it like a girl, man. I mean, touche. We got to do I what guess. you got to do, you know. So uh, I guess uh, you get busted. Yeah. And then they give you... How much time they give you? So... uh they wanted me to do five. Well, this you know, this is my first charge. Never been in serious trouble or anything, except for that speeding ticket. Right. You know, but I was four on, days on a speeding ticket, which yeah. is a traffic violation. But I was on supervised probation on that. Not su- not supervised. I'm sorry. Unsupervised. Unsupervised. Right. There we go. So for um, probably a year. Yeah, year was a year. So they I violated that when I did them deals or whatever. So she wanted me to do five, and I'm like, never take your first plea deal, you know. So I rejected that, and then uh, she came back with three. And then I told David, my lawyer, I said, look, if you can get me two years, I'll sign it. I said, we're even under like a year and 11 months. So uh, my uh, stepdad goes with him the next day to the DA's office. And he's like trying to plead with the DA. He was like, look, man, he's got a kid. He's young. He did something stupid, you know. So she was like, all right, I'll give him two years or a year and 11 months. He he signed that. That's the last offer. Not we're going to trial. So he calls me up and says, I got what you want. Come sign it. Signed it. And then that next week was Friday. That's when we went to court. Turned it in and signed it. They said, all right, time to go to jail. I said, man, damn, I ain't even, you know, I ain't got none of my shit ready or anything like that. But They wouldn't give you, they wouldn't let you report? Yeah, wouldn't let me report or anything. So they're like, he had long enough to be outside to get his stuff situated, you know, because of bond. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, fuck it. You know what I mean? So, God, it sucks to have that, though. That sucks. Yeah, imagine going in there going like, damn. To, yeah, you're going to court that morning thinking you might come yeah, home. Yeah, might coming home for at least a weekend, you know? Because right. I told my report Monday. Right. Nah, you got to go today. I've I've, had, I've reported a lot over the years. See, I've always been able to report because I always did. Like, I never ran, so they always let me, re- you know I mean? Like, obviously, it's on your record. Yeah. But I remember turning myself in for a year one time. <sighs> like, you're standing out there knowing that, like, yeah. I'm giving myself up for the next 12 months, months. man, that sucks. It does, man. It so really sometimes it's, that's why they take you from the jail because it's like, who wants to surrender themselves for the next yeah. two years? Yeah, like, exactly. We're not even taking a chance of you running. Just That's what go. it was. And I wasn't a flight risk or anything. I was ready to get it over with. But, you know, they said I was out long enough. And but it, it's such a cutoff. Together. It's just like, it is. and you're Quit. just like, oh, shit, man. It's a, it's a, yep. it's a, it's a yeah. It sucks, man. But How old was your kid then? Sure. I'm going to say he was two, or a year and a half, too, okay. I think it was. And so this is before you started using anything either? Like, what? Oh, so if, if you had to say what your drug of choice was, what's your drug of choice? So at that time, I didn't, t- like I said, I didn't touch anything when I was doing uh, the big deal or what, whatever. Well, then I end up, we ride uh, dirt bikes one day or whatever, wrecked it. Long story short, started popping the, you know, perk tents. Messed me up. I was like, man, no wonder y'all like these things. Right. I'm all high as gas. I got hooked on for a couple months. This is before I got in trouble and stuff. Well, they gave me a panic attack one night. I mean, where I was like, man, I'm going to go to the hospital, dude. Like, I was freaking out. Had big anxiety attack off of them. Stopped cold turkey. 
was good, you know, until the night they knocked down my door. Then uh, I was like, man, fuck it. I want to get high. I just lost everything. They took my money. I'm getting ready to lose my house. I lost my truck. You know, I'm going to lose my business because I don't have a truck no more. So then uh, we got some 20s, me and my son's mother, and got high all the way until I went to jail in February 8th of 2018. And was stock cold turkey when I was in there. So you go to jail withdrawing. No, I was so nervous and now I wouldn't say scared, but kind of, you know, just a little You're nervous. So edge. like I didn't feel any of the effects of the withdrawal because I was my mind was completely somewhere else. Oh, so shit. I didn't even feel no withdrawals or anything. So I was fine and then got to hang in jail and stuff and everything was all right at that time. So Hmm. And then you started out in regular old jail, ended up moving through the ranks too, yeah, right? Moving through the ranks. So I was in phase two for say three weeks and then uh i put in for a contract bed. so how's it work phase one does what phase one you got to stay in there for seven to 14 days and then that's basically locked down all day i think you get out 22 you stay in there yourself for 22 hours a day and then you get out three times so one time in the yeah. morning at nine o'clock right, i think let you out three times for like an hour and a half each yeah, time yep, right yeah yep. right so, so it's like four and a half hours a day you're out yeah and then you, that's all the times where dinner time and all that. Then they let you at night time so you can get a shower and stuff and, right. you know, get yourself relaxed and talk to some people or whatever and then get shut back down and go to sleep. And during that whole 15 days, there's no TVs. No TVs. There's no, no radios. Nothing, no books. Nothing. They don't even have books no more. Nope. I mean, but, if you can get a book if you're lucky enough. They might have one on the court that might be interesting, but. So can you still have mail, mail books? Can yeah. You, you no, you can't get, have mail now. They but, won't mail the but books at that to time, you anymore. Yeah. Well, you can get books mailed to you, but not in phase one. Right. But no, that sucks even worse. Yeah, it? I know. It's terrible, ain't it? It's like it's they tough. want you to suffer. It's yeah, like that's it's exactly like, what they want. You want to get your uh, mind mentaled and ready it's, it's for it. It's your first you know? two weeks of crash. Like, I mean, they ain't, like, they're not giving you a little bit to let you down. It's just like, bam, you're hitting the wall. Yeah. And you just do. You're going to lay it down in this concrete. It's cold. It sucks. You're not going to like it. Yep. Okay, so 15 days in there, and then they classify you to phase two? Yeah, so you go to phase two, and then that's where you have TV, and you can play cards, you get your commissary, and all that stuff. So I sat in there for, I think, three weeks. So what I did was, since I was over the year limit of county, they're supposed to send you to prison. Well, I put in for a contract bed, and what that means is that the DOC lets you stay in county, but you have to be approved to go outside or be work release. So I end up, it takes 90 days to do it. So at that time, they're like, well, he's going to be approved. So they end up putting me in inside trustee after three weeks in phase two, which is basically the same. You just go out and work in the kitchen and stuff. So I did that and was working in the kitchen and stuff. And then my contract bed comes back. I go outside for... I don't know, say three months or so, did that. And then uh, they're like, well, you want to go to work release? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go to work release, stack up money and wear your own civilian clothes. Right. Absolutely. So, right. So, when you're working for the jail, though, what are they doing? You were painting, weren't you? When you... Yeah. So, I was uh, was actually working in the kitchen. Okay. You started then, out in the kitchen? Yeah. Fucking hated it. Even yeah, though that, that's, that's it's the, the worst, job. dude. It's good. For, you get more food. Yeah. You get to uh, eat all you want. I know a couple of dudes that go to the kitchen every time and get fat as fuck every mm-hmm. time they go in. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's not my kind of work. Yeah, so I ended up getting fired from the kitchen because I had a bad toothache. I tried to tell my I wanted to go to the nurse or whatever and get set up because the dentist comes in like once a month or whatever. I needed a wisdom tooth pulled. Well, it, they ended up firing me because I didn't go in. So after that time, you're actually supposed to go to the hole. Well, you do kangaroo court and whatever and then... They send you to the hole or they can appeal it, whatever. Well, Stewart heard from somebody, which was the guy that run uh, CIWF and inside trustees and stuff. So after he uh, heard that I painted and stuff, then he went and was like, hey, I heard you paint. I'm like, yeah. He said, man, look, the hole inside needs to be painted. I was like, okay, I can do it. He says, well, it's better than you know, going to the hole, right? I was like, absolutely. Right. So start doing that. And then that's around the time my contract bed comes in. He's all right, well, I'm going to send you outside, but I want you to stay on grounds because we need some paint done on grounds. So then started painting for around there for, like I said, three, three months. 
and then uh, send me the work release. Painting, 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 and fucking sales. Yeah, right? <laughs> that shit sucks. Man. I hated it. I would have rather done that to sit around and did nothing, though. Absolutely. Because it passed your time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You get to walk around and see new people and stuff like that because you're locked up with 60 of the same dudes, you know what right. I mean? So you get to see new people or whatever and get to stare at the girls. Everybody's all high, holler, trying to holler at these ugly-ass chicks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was all right. <laughs> I was really happy, though, when I went to work at least. So I yeah, because then you get to breathe some fresh air, re, you know, wear your own clothes. Wear your own clothes, get money coming in, even though you got paid $900 a month for it's like, fucking work at least. Dude. Right, this so yeah, go crazy. over all the fees. How much is everything costing? Shit, so... You're paying a dollar fifty a day just to be yeah, there, so, no yeah, matter. Pay, still paying a dollar fifty a day. From day one. Yep. So you're still paying that even in work at least. Plus, I think it was 120 or 130 for the... Uh, ankle bracelet and then something else i don't know but it ended up equaling out to like 870 a month just right. to fucking being work yeah, at least just it's just there. a scheme that you know they can make off your yeah, ass and you know you're going to do it money. because you want to go outside and of make course. money and shit, you know? like why not yeah i'm gonna go for sure yeah so it's shit it's and sucked, then they got you bent over yeah it's fucking you big time right so all right you do your two years and uh you went in, you're using a little bit, but when you come out, what do you do then? Yeah, so well, when I got you're out. I was on probation too, right? Yeah, so I was on supervised probation. I did good. I was out of trouble for three or four months, whatever, and got on shadow track to where they track you on your phone or whatever. Doing good in life or whatever. Uh, end up getting with this girl, and then we were doing good or whatever, and uh, knew a guy who's like, man, I can get some 30s or whatever. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's, let's get high one night. You know right. what I mean? Just one time. Just we'll one roll time. Roll these dice here and yeah. see what happens. We can throw it away after that. So we end up getting high or whatever and, you know, having blasts, whatever it goes. And then it took off from there. Just kept on going and going and going. And then shoo, I can keep on going too uh so what are you eating eating roxy shooting roxy no, snorting I was, I was snorting them the first time and then uh my homeboy was like man smoke it one time smoke them I'm okay like, man, that's fucking gross but then i tried it and then fell in love with fucking smoking them really they actually hit a lot harder i guess in a way i don't know how to explain it it's just hit you quicker i should say okay and then uh yeah I started getting high that way and loving it <laughs> And you smoked on it for how long before? I mean, probation catch you? Or? Yeah, so I was actually good for like, I'm going to say a year and a half, two years. So you're just sitting on Shadow Track and they're not hitting you up for Yeah, not hitting me nothing. up or anything. Well, then. So uh, to be clear, too, Shadow Track's not like a monthly thing. You don't go in yeah, monthly. So, yeah, so all you got to do is they, uh, they text you right on. So like my birthday's the first. So I have to call in every first. And then I just basically call in there and then they, uh, check it or whatever you're good they don't tell you to come in and then that's it right you're just calling saying i live the same place phone number the same yep, still alive it. not in jail yep and then do you owe any restitution or anything like that and no you don't and then you're good okay so to ask you questions you just answer it. yeah and that's it so then when i was getting high somebody called in to my probation officer said i was getting high mm. i'm like fuck and i'm dirty you know so i'm Fucking pounding water, doing whatever I can do while well, I go in there and then piss dirty. Well, they're like, well, we'll give you a chance. You got to do a drug class. So this is when COVID was around and stuff. So you had to do it on Zoom. Is that what it's called? Zoom. Mm -hmm. Had to do it on that. And then uh, was good. Finished the class or whatever. And then step was still getting high, even in the classes or whatever. I was, you know, leaning away from the camera and snorting or smoking or whatever still getting high and then uh they didn't mess with me for a while and then it was hard to find the real 30s so then the uh, fake ones fentanyl in them i started smoking them and the, that's when fucking shit hit the fan whole buddy. different whole different buzz oh like yeah well it's not a really a different buzz it's basically the same but it fucks you up with less and your okay. your high doesn't stay as long, you know what I mean? It only stays for like 15 minutes or so. But I was getting high on them for, I would say, like two months. And I mean, shit hit the roof quick. I mean, I was fucking spending all my money on it. I was broke. 
strung out, looked sick, fucking had sores on my hands and all, and cigarette burns from nodding out on my skin. And then uh, they changed my probation officer. That's how I got caught. My probation officer got changed. Well, they tried to call me on a Friday. I didn't answer because I was dirty, man. I was fucking high and, you know, paranoid, so I'm freaking out. Right. So then uh, I ignored it, whatever. Well, I called him on a Saturday and said, hey, look, I'll come in on Tuesday. So I try to stay clean. Well, then they come knocking on my door on Monday morning. Early. Yeah, early, like 9 o'clock. I'm fucking sick, man, because I didn't even have anything at the time. So I'm fucking sick, and they're knocking on my door probation, and I'm like, fuck. So then I let them in. They're like, ah, oh, why you haven't called us, Mr. Carroll? I'm like, I called you Saturday. Well, we haven't got that. We just here to check up on you, make sure you're doing all right. Yeah, and I'm right. like, yeah, right, motherfucker. You know yeah, why. Right. They knew. <laughs> yeah, so they searched my house, whatever. They didn't find anything. Didn't have anything to fucking for them to find. Right. Well, then uh, they're like, well, can you piss in a cuff for us? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, are you going to piss dirty for anything? I'm like, yeah, uh, probably oxy cotton, <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then um, I go piss in a cup. I'm like, no, it's got fentanyl in it. So I was like, oh, are you serious? Trying to play dumb, right. you know what I mean? I already knew. Right. So then they're like, well, you gotta go to jail. Yeah, they can't leave. Yeah, you out. they can't let you. I think go. you're gonna die. Yeah. So they they're like, we gotta take you to jail. We'll get you out in a couple of days, and we're gonna get you in a rehab. We're gonna get you help. Because at this time, I'm really fucking strung out. Probably not looking good either. Like no, you said. no, you're, man. Pale, skinny. I was right. like 125 well, pounds. Yeah, and we're so stupid because we think we're going to go in there in front of that probation officer, fresh out of jail, healthy as we mm -hmm. look. You know what I mean? Yep. And then six months later, when you're half of a person, you act like they don't know. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they know. know. As soon as they, they looked at you, they knew. He definitely knew because uh, a guy named um, Brad, Brad Triplett. Yeah. That, he's an a-hole. He's dude. a scumbag. Yeah, he is. He's like, man, you look like shit. Last time I saw you, you looked all right, but man, you look like shit. He's I knew you were still getting. He's been high. doing this shit for a long time. Yeah, he bro. knew, man. He can read. He's been doing like this shit book, for dude. a long time. Yep. So uh, I go to jail for two or three days, and then uh, they say, all right, we're gonna get you into rehab because I didn't have insurance. You gotta have insurance getting to rehab. So at that time, they're working on it. I got out. I'm trying to stay clean, but I'm fucking dope sick. Can't find some box and can't find anything, and I'm I mean. Dope sick, dude. I can't even walk five feet without being out of breath and just felt beaten down. Well, then my pug calls me and says, hey, man, come on by. I'll, I'll get you better, make you feel better. I said, all right. Well, then he ends up meeting up with him, getting got better. He's like, well, here's five on the house. Just take them. Oh, no. Yeah, dude. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, man, I'm going to have to be clean by next week because they said they're going to call me within a week. I already know this. So then... um. You know, I'm getting high still throughout the week, but I'm lowering my dosage, you know, trying to get off. I still can't find some boxing. So then uh, they call me on a Thursday. I'm like, fuck, man, I don't know if I'm going to be clean or not. I, you know, I took a little hit this morning and that was it. So I chug water, chug water. The next day I'm thinking I'm all right because I already pounded like a gallon and a half of water at this time. So I go in there and. And he's like, well, what are you going to do better about yourself? Yada, yada. You know the fucking interview shit. I'm like, hey, I'm going to get a job and get my job back and do good in life. He said, well, all right, well, I want you to take a piss test today make sure everything's good. Piss in a cup. I'm waiting like 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, fuck, dude. It should not take this long. So I'm fucking. They're back fuck, there preparing. Fuck, fuck. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. He's like, hey, come here real quick. I'm like, fuck, I already knew it. So I go in there and he said, man, you're still pissing dirty for fentanyl. I said, well, dude, I. It's going to be still in my system when I when y'all just locked me up last week trying to play it down. Right, right. Three days or yeah. so is tough. And he's like, well, man, he's like, I don't know. Four days, usually it's out of your system. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. So I was doing a lot. And then he's like, I don't know, man. So <laughs> next thing you know, fucking two uh, cops will come in. I'm like, really, dude? Up against the wall. He's, yep. He's like, I can't save you. I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing for you. I'm like, fuck, man, for real, you're going to throw me in jail like that. I'm trying to better myself. He said, nah, man, I, I got to do it. My boss says I have to. So I go to jail, and then this is my third violation at the time. So I'm like, fuck, they can either smoke you and give you your backup time, or, you know, they can be easy on you. So going to jail again, I'm like, damn, really, fucking in jail for just getting high, sitting in here. I'm like, what in the fuck am I doing? So I think I sat in there for like five months or so. And then uh, got out, and then uh, 
got my shit together, went to uh, a rehab called Brightview. I did that and been clean ever since. That's been how long has that been now? So I got out 20 at October 28th of 2022, and I've been clean ever since. I got clean, well, the day they arrested me was June 1st. That's my clean date because that's the last time yeah. I touched so it's anything. it's been a little over a year. Yeah, year well, half. yep, year and a half. So this was a, I haven't touched anything. So when you went in the second time, you was withdrawing that time? That no, was, so actually still... since I lowered my dosage and was only just, you know, smoking a little bit, I had a little bit of withdrawal. I had a little bit of restless. Right, a little but restless I was, legs, a yep, little, little I, sleeplessness. Yeah, so I was sleeping okay. You know what I mean? I was good and just worried about, man, am I going to get back up time or they going to actually try to get me some fucking help. Yeah, so right. They actually, like I said, did some five months and some change or whatever it was. And uh, they said, look, we want you to go to Brightview. You got your insurance. We're going to let you out. Go strike to Brightview. Get it situated. And I did all that. So I ain't getting high no more. I'm so it's done. Brightview. Brightview is, I mean, it's obviously it's a, in-house. Is it 30 it's days, a, It's actually days? A out patient rehab okay so that means you can still live your life and do what you got to do go to work and all but you attend i go once a month now since i'm pretty far in the program but it usually starts off uh you go once a week and then it jumps to uh, two weeks and then progresses and now like i said i go once a month now yeah. so i do that what did they learn? Like, what did they teach you that Man, you didn't it's, know? It's it's really nothing. You just go in there and talk to a counselor, like, what's going on with your life? And, like, why are you getting high? Or why was you getting high? And really, that's about it. They just talk to you and, you know, talk try about your do, problems. Try to deal with the reasons why you're getting yeah, high. Yeah, why you get instead high. Instead of just the drugs. Yep. It's always what it comes back to because we're trying to deal with something yeah, exactly. You know? Until you find that spot where you're so scared of being sick. Yeah. That it just keeps you coming back to the dope. You don't even want to do it no more, but you're so scared of being sick. That's where sick. I was, man. That's exactly where I was. It's just because I didn't want to get high no more, man. I ruined my relationship with the girl I was with at the time because of all the shit. And I'm just like, dude, I just fucking wrecked everything. I ain't got a good relationship with my son either. And it's just like, man, dude, like, what in the fuck am I doing with my life? Like, I was doing so good. I had a house and cars and all. Like I had a good life when I was 19, 20 when my son was born to fucking no money in the pocket, sick, look like shit, getting ready to lose your house again because you ain't got no money to pay your bills because you're getting high. Don't so, take long, does it? No, it don't, man. It took so two it, months of me being on fentanyl. It took me two months to do all that. Destroy, destroy everything. Destroy everything. And at the same time, too, you're starting to make that kind of money when you're that young. You never... Did you understand working? Like No, I didn't, dude. I didn't understand nowhere. I hate I didn't even work. When I started my business, it was like I work here and there, but it was like my dad and this other guy I hired, they took care of it. Because I was paying them and I was like, Look, if y'all wanna keep working, I'm gonna go and put the company out there, do advertisement, shit like that. And I was doing the uh estimates and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. And gave you a little legitimacy for your other money, too. Yeah, your illegal did. money, too, right? Yeah, I was bringing in some good money, man, for my uh, business. So it was a cover-up for the weed money. I don't like calling it dope money, you know what I mean? But, yeah, the weed money, so. All right. So kind of, guys, so that's what's keeping you clean today. Is this still going to them meetings? What else do you yeah, do? So Is there I, other shit you do? Man, really, it's just my son, dude, because me and my son's mother had a talk, and she was like, imagine your kid going to your fucking grave crying and i you know i thought about it for a second i'm like man imagine that fucking kid crying dad i want you here but you can't because you want to fucking get high so that's been stuck in my mind plus the relationships with my ex you know and all that how it ruined that and we were good when we first i mean everything was perfect and then just getting on drugs just ruins every relationship there is no in between yeah, right, well, that, that's because it changes you, right? Yeah, it changes you, man. It like, fucking, what's the different shit you did then versus what you do now? Fucking do anything to get money and lying, you know, cheating, lying, cheating, stealing, stealing. Well, I, yeah, I stole a little bit, but not really. I you stole a lot mean? of shit, but yeah, you're it's you're not your character is different. Yeah, your character's way it off. Changes you know your what soul. I mean? It's not. Yeah, it's not you. You know what I mean? And my even both my exes told me like it's not you. That's not the Brandon I knew. Like, Brandon never was too scared to take an Advil 
because he thought he was going to fucking OD. So now he's a full drug addict mm-hmm. and smokes fucking cigarettes and this. And he ain't never done that. You know what I mean? So put that in the, my head and like, I get it now. Like, fuck that. I don't want to get high anymore. I want to live a good life, stack money up and take care of my kid. And that's it, man. Yeah, man. You got to stay walking that road too. Yeah. Because all it takes is that one pill. Yeah, that's all it takes, man. You Hanging out with the wrong person will do it to you, yeah. man. That's why I cut everybody off. I don't have no friends. I don't do anything. I go to work. I worked, you know, sometimes 12 hours and go home and call it a day. So know, how was sleep. that? Like, Because I know you hated work when you first yeah. started working. But I, I grew into it, man. I'd right. rather do that than have to watch my back 24-7 thinking a fucking Fed is sitting in the driveway or right. wherever the case may be. And I just, nah, fuck that. I ain't got to worry about it no more. Right. So I'm all right now. So now you're working 46 hours a week? Yep. Where are you at? CNN still? Or? No, I ain't ZM no more. Okay. I'm at uh, Southern Maryland Air. Basically the same thing, but I load trucks and stuff like okay. that. It's a good job, man. My boss is laid back. I can do anything I want. Usually, I get there early in the morning. I don't have to be, but I do. Clock in, clean up a little bit, and then I'll drink my coffee and be on my phone for a couple hours and to get to work and knock the day out. Hmm. So, yeah. That's what's up. So, you got you got custody of your kid, or you just get him on the weekends? No. So, we uh, I always had custody of my son, but my baby mom tricked me one time into, I don't know how that shit happened, but she ended up getting full custody. But I had the weekends at that time. But we went back to court, and now we got 50-50. So now, you know, I get him half the time, and she gets him half the time. Right. How's that work as far as uh, child support? I get raked over that. I okay, pay so you still got to pay her <laughs> yeah. for child support. Yeah, I help her out. I give her $200 a month. I think, yeah, $200 a month for child support, and then I pay daycare, which is 500 So. So whatever, it's the price of having a kid. And it is, up, bro. You know? And, I, you know, at least you look at it that way, too, yeah. instead of, uh, you know, like some cats got seven kids out there and don't pay a penny yeah. and then they get mad when, when somebody's trying to get some money right, out yeah. of them. It's Take like, care of your kid, man. Like, bro, right. You know, it's you terrible. Know I mean, you got to do something. You can't get mad because you, your kid needs to eat. Yeah. And needs to be clothed and has to go to school. And all this shit. Why you got the mom struggling, you know? Right. Like, why you want to do that? I, know, I don't care if you got beef with your baby mom, man. You always take care of you your gotta baby mom. You got to take care of your kid. Yeah. I mean, you got to take care of her and she can take care yeah. of him. Especially if she has him more than you do. I ain't giving her no money so she get her nails done. She gonna <laughs> know, go get her right? nails done, get her hair done. <laughs> and that's what my baby mom does. I know she does. Right, but at the same time, too, honor. think about the money she spent on the food. And yeah, she's like, first thing I did was take that money and fed my food, or yep. fed my kid, your yep. kid. And then now you gave me some money that's extra because everything else is taken care of. So I'm, I'm going to take care of what I would have with that money. Yeah. So it all works out. Yeah, it does, man. man. It does. I don't bitch about it, man. I give. I we're all legit, so we just go through child support mm-hmm. place, whatever. I pay him two hundred, and she does whatever. And if Oakley wants something, then he'll say, "Hey, Dad, can you give me this?" And mm-hmm. yeah, sure, buddy. I get him anything he wants. He's the only kid. I know a lot of people say, "Don't do that. Make him to a spoiled brat." I get it. I'm the only child. You know what I mean? I get. I used to get anything I wanted to. Yeah, well, so somebody can be spoiled. You still have to, you got to teach them how to do shit. It's yeah. the main thing. As long yeah. as he knows how to take out the trash and make a fucking sandwich. And, yeah. You know what I mean? There's certain shit that you're there for to teach them. It doesn't yeah. mean you can't get them shit. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you he know? does. I tell him, I said, look, because he, he likes to play Call of Duty. So, I, you know, Dad, can I get this character? Clean the room up a little bit, and then I'll yeah, get give you him guy. a reason to do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. you know, make him work for the money a little bit. Sometimes, you know, I'll be nice. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and get it. I mean, you don't have to do nothing for it. Now you can make him always do something. But, you know, he he that's knows so. there's responsibility with the money. I guess that's how you can say it. Right. So, how old is he? He is going to be turning. He's eight this year, so he's going to be turning nine. Mm, he's in school and everything, man. Yep. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, he does. He loves it, too. So that's a good thing because I fucking hated school. Yeah. That's why I didn't even go half the time. Yeah, I wasn't much. On, I, I was pretty good up to the fifth grade, I guess. And then once sixth grade hit and girls and, you know, changing yeah. classes and all the other shit came in. That's the same time I fucking started rebelling around changing. sixth and seventh grade. Yeah. So as you come in there to sixth or seventh grade or sixth grade and all them seventh grade girls are like, oh, look at this new guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's trouble for math class because I didn't pay much attention after that. Yeah. I got in a lot of trouble in school, too, man. It's fucking big trouble. Didn't go half the time when my parents were about to go to jail because I would fucking not go or skip. Right. I just hated it. There was no real reason to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, you learn this and learn this, but 
didn't teach anything valuable of what you need to learn about life. You know what I mean? Yeah, other than reading <clears throat> yeah. and a little bit of social skills because you yeah, had to deal it. with people. Yeah, I got terrible social skills. I hate talking to people, you know what I mean? Right. I'm terrible at that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I remember one other thing when we were sitting in jail. Uh, Nate used to get that K2 in all the oh time. Oh, my God, dude. And then he uh, he smoked and kirked out on us that one day. Yeah, he? dude. He fucking... What, what, forget what the name was. You remember the name of it? Hmm. <sighs> Fuck. I don't know. These other guys, dude. Whatever the K2 is, they were smoking. Yeah. Spice. Yeah. The, chicken. So, I think I can't remember what it was called, but called all kinds of stuff. They call it chicken in jail now. The chicken now? Yeah, chicken spice. Yeah, I remember they called it spice. That's the only thing they called it. Yeah, but this kid was in there for what ninety days with us, barely, yeah. barely ever mm-hmm. left, and always had some of that shit to smoke. Yeah, he was, was a high fucking full blood drug addict, dude. He had to have it every day. Like he's like, man, you know where? He's, where I need to get some spice. Every day he was just flipping for flipping it, flipping for it, dude. and then he smoked it and kirked out. Yeah. Like, the demons were coming to get him, bro. Yeah. Do dude. you remember? <laughs> yeah, he dude. was scared. Like there was look in his face that he was scared. He's the scared. devil. Yeah. He, he saw gone, the dude. devil, bro. He supposedly OD'd on it. That's, I guess you can OD on it. But um, uh, I remember he I, he went he lit the uh piece of paper in the microwave. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Well, then he went in the bathroom, and then I hear him puffing it. And me and you were talking, watching TV or whatever, and I hear him go. Bleh! Remember when he was doing that? And was kirking out. I'm like, what the fuck? And we're all looking over, and he's fucking hopping up and down and fucking puking on himself and shitting himself. He was, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And we could see right back into the bathroom Yeah, right man, right there. And then we went back to the bunk, didn't we? Yeah. I was like, my yeah, bunk we was walked right away. Yeah. So I was like, yo, I'm, I'm getting away from here. I ain't having no parts of this. Yeah, and I told Derek to go I, hit the door, remember? Right, I forgot about that. Because yeah. that's how he did, too. Yeah. He didn't start screaming. It was like a, something. Yeah, it was like a fucking like the devil coming yeah, out yeah bro and his type. eyes was all big and he was screaming god it was scary wasn't it it's like yeah, it was something nuts. wrong with that dude and he was like i said he was like seizuring out on the floor so i told Derek, i was like dude hit the door no nah, he'll be all right i'm like i don't know dude just right. hit the fucking door and tell him nobody's right. gonna get in trouble maybe he might be somebody, fucking dying somebody hit the button man yeah so they end up hitting the button and then fucking uh Derek's like somebody something's going on with this guy in here i hear him and then they say lock down lock down and they dragging him out and he's like i feel funny i remember him saying that he said i feel funny yeah, he's like i feel funny i, I need help part. yeah this I is when they were dragging him yeah, out i remember him dragging him where we could see him from my bunk and i yeah. remember him screaming about something like they're coming to get yeah, me or, yeah uh they're gonna get me or something to that effect bro and then he was like i need help after and that. the look in his face like he, he, yeah, was, he was so terrified scared. he was so scared his eyes were so big he was so scared that shit fucked that him up. That was crazy. And dudes would be getting stuck in the fucking kitchen. Like, they would be eyes red, dude. Like, their eyes would be really red, and they would be stuck in the kitchen, and they can't move. And I was watching this one dude, and he was just, like, at the microwave shaking and couldn't move. I'm like, you all right? And he's like, yeah, I'm all right. And then, he like, he wouldn't move. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Why y'all want to smoke something know, like right? that? That's fucking crazy. Yeah, definitely did some crazy shit. Yeah, dude, there was a couple guys that was like spazzing out, but he was the, Nate was the real he guy all that the way fucking in. went all the way and in. And then it was nuts and butts for us for the next week. Yep. At next least. week, stripped us. Yeah, every day. Nuts and butts, mm-hmm. pissing this cup. All, yeah. And they can't test for K2. They say they can, but nah, they, they, they can't do it. Yeah, but exactly. Then, and then they got that other kid too, didn't they? The boy he was smoking with. Oh. <sighs> I've tatted on him. I've tatted on him and his mom since then. Uh, but I thought they ended up getting him, too, because they locked both of them up. Man, and which what's one? That, the, oh God, I can't remember his last name. He drove that little BMW. Oh, Jarrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they locked both of them up. And then once they were gone, like, all that shit was gone. Yeah. Except for that red-haired dude, man. <laughs> the red that looked like the Amish dude with the big yeah, old beard. Uh, Jerry. Jerry, what maybe his name? I can't remember his name, but he'd be high as shit. Yeah, that's why he was getting his commissary and his eyes were bloodshot. I'm like, dude, I don't know if you should go up there. It's front of Von Brock, too, Bro. dude. I don't oh know my how, god! I don't know how he made it through, however much time he did. Because yeah. he'd be up there, like just fucking uh, nodding out, and right shit. in front of the window, right in front of the commissary yep. machine, or right in front of that machine, fucking dip right money. in his mouth too. It was crazy. Yeah. Never got caught, and then he went home on a uh, worker lease. Uh, home monitoring. Oh uh, yeah, home monitoring. I'm sorry. Yeah, home right. monitoring. My bad. I didn't okay. say work release, but yeah. Yeah, because I left before he got out. Yeah, I left right before that for my home monitoring. Yeah, you went. Oh yeah, you did want to. Yeah, monitor, I did nine months, man. Everybody did, man. I couldn't because I had a distro, mm-hmm. so that's why I had to stay in there. And the pod flipped like four times. I'm like, man, is it my time to go home yet? Right. Fuck. Finally got that DOC uh, 
release date, and it said 9-3, and I said, fuck, I got four more months, baby. Start Don't counting. Fly on by. Start counting it then. Yep, I started counting right when it was 90 days to start counting. And then I was like, all right, after you go home, I'm out. Yeah, and when you're working, it makes it so much it easier. Did. Yeah, though, it man. did, man. You know what I mean? You got to find nice. a routine, and a work routine is so much better than cards, you know, whatever. Yeah, I didn't play cards, much cards. Cards, basketball, and then back to cards again, yeah. and work out a little bit, eat again. That shit sucks. Yeah, it's such a you know boring I mean? routine. It man. is, dude. The county jail's the worst place. Yes, absolutely. They say, well, you should have got sent to prison. It's like, dude, I'd rather stay up in the county and be bored and go to work at least. And yeah, I think I think the, the thing about that is until you go to prison, you don't realize that prison is better. Yeah. Um, True. And you're, everybody's terrified of prison because yeah. you're, you're raised to believe that prison's yeah, horrible. Yeah, get shanked and yeah, all that shit. Like, and it is. It's a fucking terrible place to be. Uh, but compared to jail, as far as what you have to do mm-hmm. and that things like that, it's way better. Yeah. Play softball, handball, basketball. You can go out anytime Play you want. Play pool and all that, I heard, yeah, too. Depending on what, depending on it, yeah. Uh, Butner had a pool table. They had four pool tables. They had foosball tables. They had CD players you could rent out and and, and get a CD and listen to CDs. Oh, yeah. Uh, they had a band room. See how I was all, singer yeah, of a sweet. band for like six months. I had a, We had a bass player, guitar player, drum player. We played right on the yard. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, it definitely gives you something to do, which passes your time so much faster. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, can you imagine doing 20 years in a county jail? Like, there's nothing to do. So when you got 5, 10, 20 years, yeah, you have man. to have something got, yeah. to do, or them dudes are going to lose their yeah, mind. Exactly. And Where they got run? jobs down in prison too, but you only made what fifty cents to a dollar. Yeah, a fucking uh, hour where or something. I was at at Unicor, they made uh, uh, the jackets that held Kevlar for the military. Oh yeah, yeah. So we sewed all that shit, and some of them dudes would make you know two fifty a month. Damn, man. because they could make huh. so much. Yeah, they got paid by the piece. You okay, know what well, I mean? that's so, piece work. Don't yeah, and they dude. got fast. Yeah, like, you got. Fuck yeah, think years. about that money like Probably that. Money. Well. That's the only way you got to survive. Some yeah. of them dudes didn't have no money, money from the street. Yeah, dude. And that shit sucks, too. That's I see a lot of people work. suffering that yeah. don't have money from the street. I was grateful that I did have money from the street. So, Yeah, and there's definitely always that beggar at the trash can. How about that guy at the trash can that wants your peas? Fuck, what you're, was his name? You're emptying man. your trash, you're emptying your God, shit out. Yeah. You'll take everything. He was a black guy, wasn't he? I don't he know. There's guy. always one of them. There's always God. one or there two of them one in every work, block. I can't remember his fucking name. He was all right, but yeah, he's like, I'll take anything. That's one of them yeah, trays. And that's, I'll do the same thing sometimes. I first go in, you're so hungry, bro. Yeah, yeah, and I, then yeah, there's I like these dope sick dudes that are coming in and they don't yeah. want to eat their shit. I'm like, bro, let me get that. I'm I know. eating that they shit. They always up. made fun of me when I was in there when I was dope sick. They're like, come on, give me your tray, man. I know you ain't going to eat it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, here you go, brother. He already knew I was dope sick. And they then a week later, you're it. eating all of it. Yeah, they're like, what happened, bro? I was eating so good while you were sick. <laughs> I'm now, gonna feel better now. Now you feel better, and I'm starving. I got an appetite now. Yeah, for sure. That's the worst at the beginning, dude. Whew. So hungry. Yeah, hungry. Can't fucking. Cold. Cold as fuck, because you're wearing a fucking little skimpy thing. Yeah, And man. then they got the little shitty-ass fucking blue blankets. God, yeah. I hate them things, too. You dude. know, the blankets used to be half that big. So when I really? first started going in, they didn't even cover my body. Oh, my God. Like, it wouldn't, on, even, it wouldn't even cover me to here. That's some BS. It was bad. Just to cover your fucking and, upper And then torso. they finally got them blankets that were actually big enough to cover the whole bed. Damn. Like, well, that's they, good, then. They weren't even big enough to cover the whole cot when I was first going in. Well, I'm really glad they bad. changed that before I came in there. That's for And real. they used to have cotton blankets. You used to be able to get these white cotton blankets if you were allergic to that. Yeah. I knew some people were allergic shit. to wool and yeah. shit like that. They oh, they were great. Blankets. They were white. They were great. I don't think yeah. they do that much anymore. Either. I don't think so. I haven't seen any it's different like If you're allergic blankets. to wool, you're hit. Yep. You're fucked. You're scratched. You probably have, they give you probably an extra bed sheet. That's probably, probably what they probably do. Probably a sheet. Yep. Fuckers. I'm glad I ain't in there no more. I hate that place. Yeah, man. You got to remember that shit, too. Yeah, I do. You I'll know? always remember That's it, one dude. of the things that, that uh, goes away after a while is you stop remembering how bad it is. Yep. And then you start doing things that start can put doing you crazy back shit. So yeah. that you remember. And that's why I kept going back because I always forgot how county was until mm-hmm. you're sitting in fucking handcuffs in the front. Like, fuck, man. Yeah. Here again. Is this matter shit going to let me go this yeah. time or not? And then half time they never let me go anyway because it was always violation of probation. Right. So I had yeah, to they wait. don't want you to go. Yeah, well, they're gonna keep they you. Yeah, they ain't gonna give you no bond. You gotta talk to the judge. I actually got a bond during COVID on probation. No, I see. Yeah, because of COVID, they were letting yeah. a lot of people out. I heard uh, just because my record, I like. I mean, I got in a lot of trouble. But I always turned myself in. I never ran. Yeah, I never had to look for me. I always made it to court. I always did what I had to do once I got called. Yeah, just get it over with, man. I don't know why people want to run. I don't understand if you got like. 
if you're on murder, you know, a murder charge or something, you run while yeah, you can. Yeah, but course. if you're on something dumb, where you're going to do it maybe a year, year and a half. Again, just I think it comes back to being sick a lot of times, yeah. man. You're sick. You're yeah, terrified of fucking that. It and does. even if I'm not sick, I don't want to go in there. Yeah. I don't want to go in there and see them people. <laughs> no. I don't want to go Be in there fucking cold. and walk Where down that shit? hallway yeah. and then go up there around the control center and then go down past the the kitchen. And which way are we going? I always go right. They never take me to the left. Uh, I never go towards yeah. low yeah. classification. I always go to high classification. Do you? I always went to the low, so I went left. They always put me in 2AB, 2CD. And I've never been in 3, the new one. I, I was in that one uh, the last time I was in the county. That was the first time. I've been in phase two in the jail. Usually they got other outer buildings right beside the animal shelter. What's that fucking building called? CCC. Mm -hmm. I've always been there. But what happened was I was, uh, they were closing down the annex. So they moved us all inside the main jail. Well, you know, a couple of weeks go by, whatever. Well, then they were getting ready to move us to the CC building. I'm like stoked because it's a dorm room. You can walk around. Right. It's not legit lockdown because they don't shut doors because it's like a big old bunk area. Well, then they were like, yeah, you, Carol, you're not going in uh, my celly at the time. I can't remember his name. They're like, yeah, you ain't going either. Y'all got charges. I'm like, what the fuck got charges for? In-house charges? Yeah, in-house charges. And then come to find out, they said we didn't lock down. So there was a new CO trying to be hardcore. My, our fucking door was cracked like this when the uh, second lockdown was called mm. and our door wasn't always shut. Mm -hmm. So he charged us for it, even though we were in our cell. It was bullshit. So they end up reviewing it. They didn't charge us, thank God, because that would have been dumb. And then uh, they asked me if I wanted to go inside trustee. I'm like, yeah, get me the fuck up yeah, out of here. You know what I mean? Because it was just a bunch of, uh, there was a couple pe pedos in there, and they were getting protected by the other people because they were, well, they would, I wouldn't say they were protecting him, but they were using him. They're like, hey, you get our tablets and you get our trays and stuff, and that's what the pedos were doing for the, other guys so i was mm. just like man fuck these they guys just whoring themselves out yeah so they didn't get beat yeah up. beat up yep it's crazy they just let them mix with everybody like i that, know man, man. They That's didn't do crazy that. they didn't do that back in the day well the last time not when i was in there previous but when i think it was in 2019 when i was in there they fucking whored out this pedo he was touching his niece and uh they were slamming the door in his face they fucking knocked his tray off the into the floor or they would make him pay like i'm gonna say like 10 soups or something they made him pay rent and he mm -hmm. had to be in his own cell because nobody wouldn't be a celly right mm -hmm. you know you ain't coming in my cell motherfucker so he had his own cell but they made him pay and they hoard him out and he deserved it man you don't yeah, do that yeah, shit it's fucking course. sickening really you should be in a n fucking another and place at least they're not protecting them like that though it's kind of the big thing too you yeah know what i mean at least you're not like i don't know yeah, they should be sure protected. nothing happens to them. You should just like let them be eaten. Yeah, that's feed the same them to thing. the fucking sharks, man. Absolutely, dude. That's how I feel about them. But then sometimes they do get protected. So and it's whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the fucking county. What are you gonna do about it? You're just one guy, but so be it, you know. Yeah, and there's definitely cruddy charges in there. That one dude's trying to talk to me when I come in on when we was in there together. Yeah. Chapman was trying to talk to me, blah, 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 blah. I was like, bro, you just get away from me. Then when I was in work lease, I read in the paper where he like shook his six month old kid. All oh, that fucking I know exactly the, what you're talking until about. Until the eyeball was messed mm. up and had brain damage and all that. I was like, bro. Piece of shit. Like, come dude. on, man. Who does some shit? He like got that? he got I was actually getting my hair cut the other day. And the guy that was telling me about the one you were just talking about said that he was getting whored out in the county. Like, they were he fucking be. making him pay or taking his trays and all that. Yeah, oh, my God, a, he deserves it. He Absolutely. was a goofy-looking dude that looked like a, a chomo anyways. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it was real easy, it. real easy to take him. Yeah. yeah, he kept asking me questions. I was like, yo, you got to – he said something about uh, not getting a bond. He's like, why would I not get a bond? I was like, probably because you got a victim. Yeah, I was like, is there a victim on your case? He's like, well, per se. And I was like, that's it, bro. Get the fuck away from yeah, me. Yeah, what the that's fuck? That's it. I don't need nothing to do with you because yeah. I know what you're saying. You're saying <laughs> that you don't want to tell me because your shit is messed yeah, up. Yeah, your shit's crazy. And then I didn't find out till I read it in the paper, and I remember telling Cap. I was like, yo, look, this is that oh, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Because me and Cap was sellies. about it. I was like, man, that's crazy. Yeah, he got whored out when I heard that yeah, he was I'll in the county. And that's he deserves it, man. You can't hurt hurt something that's so innocent in life, dude. Like, what I fucking know, brings man. you to that? You know, I mean, to hurt it and, and, and then to hurt it sexually. 
Yeah, that's even like, crazier. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with you, bro? Yeah. There's something broken in these people. And that's when the time's a call for a bullet in the head, I personally yeah, something say. needs to happen to them. So. Yeah, man, well, that's good. I'm uh, I'm glad you're still straight, bro, because, uh, you know, it's hard to catch being straight when you're younger. Yeah. It, it is. It's hard. It's hard to, stuff. Yeah, it's hard to get the consequences right. Yeah. I had a lot of consequences that I just kept on rolling through. Um. I was talking to somebody else the other day, like we talked about the fear of coming out of it. Like that's one thing that keeps you coming around is because you're so scared of that sickness that you just get high again. Yeah. You're so scared of it. So once you get clean a couple of times, yeah, you it's understand better, that it is possible. And then that fear isn't as great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The first time yeah. you're like, oh my God, I'm going to die if mm. I don't, if I don't get high. <laughs> yeah. But then the second time you're like, I didn't die the last time. This sucks. But I can get through it. And then, I, like, I feel like on the third or fourth time, you're like, man, this is like, I can do this. Yeah, and you, you, you feel know, so much better. You know yeah. there's a possibility for it. Yeah. And then it's easier to kick. Yep. I don't know. Just something I've been putting together in my head. Yeah, you feel so much better, dude, and you can just do more with your life instead of spending your money on drugs. You know what I mean? You can actually live, go out, and take vacation instead of spending all your fucking money on dope. You know what I mean? It's just a lot better feeling than... Fucking getting high and not for chasing, a bit. not the chaos. The I, chaos yeah, I love thing. that. That's what I'm saying. I love it. you got chase nothing. You ain't yeah, gotta, right. It's not like yeah. you're getting off work saying, "Oh my god, I hope so and so hits me up just so I can feel good." Yeah, it's just so I can go to sleep or just so I can work tomorrow. Or, <laughs> you know, fill in the blank. Exactly. You're you know, exactly, you don't have to yeah, do right. none of that. Just let your body learn to live on what it's supposed, supposed to live to. on. Yeah, because it sucks when you can't find them right when you get off work and it's just like fuck. Then you go home and mope around and hope something comes up because you're mm -hmm. kind of sick, but you're kind of not. Man, fuck that. And then dude. how about this one? So you're sitting there. You're sicker than hell. He ain't had nothing for whatever, six, seven hours. The phone rings. It's your buddy, and he's got some for you. How do you feel then? Oh, man, it feels hard. You feel fine. So that's how your bad. body works, ain't it's it? It's crazy. You haven't even put that into your system yet, but your body's already releasing dopamine yep. to make you feel better based crazy. on the hope that you're going to feel better. Better. And your body says, oh, my God, he's got those pills. Let's make him feel better so that he can get over there Man. and get us what we want. Damn, yeah, that's right, too, because I always felt good. As soon as somebody called me, hey, I got and 10 I, of them. Come on by. Right, I, I feel I, fine. I'm ready to rock and roll. I always wondered, like, how in the hell does that work? <laughs> like, there's no medicine in my body yet, but I already feel better. Feel good, yeah. It was so confusing for so many years, and now I get it. I get it because all it is dopamine. Yeah, it's all it is. You know, that's what the pill does. It sets off dopamine in your head. It makes so you the happy. the thought of it, yeah. it can give you dopamine. Yeah. Just like the thought of sex or the yeah. thought of a concert or the thought of something exciting yeah. sets off dopamine and in your mind. It makes you happy. Which makes you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. Yeah. So I just think that understanding a little bit more about how it works inside of my head is helpful, too. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of just this, uh, you know, give yourself over to God and everything will be okay. AA scenarios, I don't, that doesn't work real well for yeah. me. Just never did. Uh, I like to think about shit and put it in categories and understand it more. Yeah, like I said, I'm just so glad that. I ain't got to worry about that shit anymore in my yeah. life, man. I mean, of course, there's going to be speed bumps to where you think about, man, I like to have a line right now. Sometimes I do think like that. I'm not going to lie, but I'm fine, dude. I'm good, you yeah, know? Right. It's not worth the it. The money gets me high now, just, you know, even though it's just a fucking paycheck and government takes half of it. Fuck the government, by the way. But, uh, yeah, you know, just that gets me high and stacking my money up. Now I learned to do option trading and invest in money so that's all i do now is learn uh basically the stock market so you can trade options and stuff and i've been hooked on that and i just watch videos of how these dudes are making you know one to two thousand dollars a day just by fucking trading options for you know an hour and that's it right. it's just crazy so now like i'm really interested in it so I'm, see that's in the, you're getting a dopamine hit from yeah, that that's I love what's it. cool about it is yeah. because once you start finding something like that that sets the dopamine off in your body naturally that's where success comes yeah. from like you're going after something that can make you successful and your body's feeling good doing it yeah it's not a sufferable thing you're not going in there like oh god oh, do 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 yeah. you're actually excited and when you're excited you're going to do it more which is going to make you more money yeah it's going to make you 10 times more successful at it than if you hate it yeah i fucking love doing it dude it's it's the best and plus you know with the way the stock market is and stuff like that you can make a lot of money and with inflation how your money value goes down 
and you put your money in the stock, your money's actually going up, you know, even with inflation going down. If that makes any sense. I don't know. Probably sound a little retarded about it, but it's, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's awesome to do, man. I don't know right, why, but, but I really enjoy all it. All that matters is something that you're interested in. Yeah. It's not counterproductive to life. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's not like gambling, for example. Yeah. <laughs> just spitting your money away. You have to have a little education about it. Yeah, exactly. But it's probably like sitting down at a poker table, too. You're going to have to lose a little bit before you make any. Yeah, I try to learn that in county and it didn't pan out very good. I lost like 100 bucks. Yeah, I think I lost five and I never sat down again. So, I, well, I wanted to learn because I was bored, man. And all these guys like, come on, go take your money, bro. And I'm like, man, well, fuck it. I'm going to try. And then I got hooked on it for a little bit. And I'm like, it's actually all right. It changes the time, you know? Mm-hmm. So. But, yeah. I don't mind gambling that much. It's fun, though. I've never been much on gambling. Never, like, giving my money away at a chance of winning something when I knew I could just buy a pill and get high. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> I was like, ah, no, I got this money. I know what it can give me. I'm not going to take a yeah, chance. Yeah, I don't want to take a fucking chance and losing it and be fucked. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, yeah, well, that's what's up. You don't mess around with a lot of social media, though, do you? Nah, uh-uh. Not really, so nowhere for anybody to find you or anything? Yeah, no. No links. No, no links cares. or anything. Yep, all good on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go in here and finish this sleeve up. Man. All right, buddy. We're trying to get this bitch done for six months, right? Yeah. Well, I kept wanting to get other tattoos, so that's the that's reason why. That's why we did trade off your hands and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I got my hands done and I got that done. I need to get this arm done. I got a good idea what we're going to put right here, too, I think. So Okay. We'll but we'll get this finished first. Yeah, let's go in there and finish the top. All right, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So like, subscribe, share, man. Um, if you're still hanging out, you know, like I said before, if you're still hanging out at this point, you know you owe me a like. And they're free. Yes, they are free. They're free. Absolutely. All right, man. Sweet. <laughs>